Hi, welcome to the Rock and Roll Painter Show. My name is J.D. Wayne, and I am the Rock and Roll Painter. A few years ago, when I got started in the world of art instruction, I did some demonstrations around town where I painted some music. And I soon discovered I could paint an entire painting in the framework of one song. So I put on the top hat, put on the sunglasses, and the rock and roll painting was born. But in this environment here, there's some copyright issues regarding music, so we're just going to show you how you can do a painting today. Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to do a little painting called There Must Have Been Some Magic. This is uh, the Midwest here. It's the middle of winter, so it's going to be a nice little winter scene. Uh, we're going to have our colors roll across the screen. Let's go ahead and get started. We've got a 16 by 20 canvas. It's already been prepped with a white medium that allows the colors to blend onto the canvas. This is a wet on wet oil painting. So let's start with a little bit of a Prussian blue, a little bit of midnight black, a little bit of Prussian blue and some midnight black. Load that brush up, really tap in and really get those bristles loaded up. And let's go up here to the canvas and see what we can do. It's going to be a nice dark wintry sky, so these colors will give a nice cold sky. As I work my way down, it's picking up that liquid white. It'll get a little bit lighter along the horizon, which is fine. It's what we want. Let's get a little bit more of that color. It's got a little, little light, a little more Prussian blue, a little more black. Get a nice atmosphere going in that sky. Get some atmosphere. Bring that sky down to about right there. Need a little more dark in that corner. A little more dark. If the corners are dark, it helps bring your eye into the painting. So we'll make that corner nice and dark. Bring it all down. Now I'm just going to unload the brush, get some of this color off my brush. We're going to have snow all the way down here, but this way we don't have just a plain white canvas for snow. That the blue will help give it a lot of shadow, <clears throat> really help the effect of the snow. Now I'm just going to softly kind of blend this around, take out some of the brush strokes. As you can see it's dark in the corner, it gets light down by the horizon. Just want to softly take out some of those brush strokes. Softly take them down. Down here we'll take a little bit of them out, but we're going to do a lot of, there's going to be some land down here, some hills rolling. I just want to take out some of the, take out some of the brush strokes. We've got a nice moody kind of sky going on. We'll set that down here. We're going to pick up a uh, small fan brush. We're going to go back into some of that color, some of that blue, some of that black, and get a little bit of white. These trees, we're going to do a couple trees here that are kind of far away, so we don't want to, um, as things get closer to you, they're dark in value. So with these being far away, they'll be a little bit lighter, which, help, which will help give the illusion of distance to them. So we're going to do a couple trees. Oh, maybe a little tree right here. Just kind of touch in where I want that tree to go. This time I'm gonna have the trees kind of, the uh, pine trees kind of growing up a little bit. So I just start at the top of the corner, just start to touch in. As I'm coming down, I'm gonna push in a little bit. Get some of the effect of those pine trees growing up. And as it come down, that pine tree gets wider at the bottom like a Christmas tree. Get some more color here, get some more of that color. It's a lighter color. It's going to show these trees kind of off in the distance. I'm going to do another tree right beside it. Do another tree right beside it. And I'll have this tree, it'll come down a little bit, which will make this tree seem a little bit closer. Once again, I'm just touching with the corner. As I come down, I get more of the brush involved. Get more of the brush. You really get the feel of a pine tree. An evergreen, even though it's blue, you don't want any green into your snow. So even though they're evergreens, we're always painting them blue. Now I'm going to get a bigger fan brush. I'm going to have a little bit bigger tree. Well, first I want to set those trees in the ground. I'm going to pick up a small one inch brush, get a little bit of my white, a little bit of my white. If I pull down the base of those trees, I can set, a, set them on the ground, pull a little shadow into that. And you can see there's a nice hill over here. Somebody can ride their sled right down that hill. And just add a little bit of white down here. You can really see that land coming together already down here. You can see these trees are far off in the distance. Put that brush back, go back to that large fan brush I had now. Go back into that color. We might get a little bit darker now, a little bit darker this time. A little bit darker, really load that brush up. Really load that brush up. We're gonna have this tree a little bit taller, a little bit closer. And it's gonna go, it's going to, um, 
layer in front of these other trees, which will help give more distance to it. Whatever you do in a painting, you always try to have the illusion of distance. So once again, I'm just going to touch up in the corner. As I come down, get more of that brush involved. Get more of that brush. You can see that, you can see that evergreen. If you mess up a little bit, just go back up and touch it up. Make a couple of them limbs a little bit longer. And you see that color being a little bit darker. It reads that tree being a little bit closer. A bit just, just the color value. A little bit darker makes that tree seem a little bit closer. Set him down on the ground. And we'll go back and pick up that small brush and a little bit of white. I know some artists like to hold a real nice fancy palette all the way through, but it just kind of gets in my way. So I, this is the way I like to do it. We're going to pull some more of that color down, create another little, little piece of land. Going back here and look at the distance we're creating already. Look at the distance. That's what we like. Set that tree right on the ground. Get a little bit more of that white so that tree, so you can see that piece of land. Creating distance, that's all we're trying to do here. Now I'm gonna pick up that brush again. Really load it up with some dark color. Really load it up, really load that brush up. Load up both sides, get it to a chisel edge. Get it to a chisel, uh, chisel edge. I'm gonna do a nice big pine tree over on this side. This one's nice and close, has a lot of dark value. Once again, same thing, just touch with the corner, touch with the corner. You can see that tree starting to form as you're coming down. Start bending those bristles, start bending them up, bending them up. You can see those branches starting to grow up. Some of the, some of the pine trees, the, the branches hang down. Some of them kind of hang, grow up. It's hard to hang up. But we all have hang-ups, but the trees don't have hang-ups. Come on down with that tree. Really set that tree up close here. Set him down on the ground. Once again, I'm gonna come back with my little small brush, a little bit of white, a little bit of white. That's the trick to set that, set that tree down on the ground. He's not floating in the air. It really establish more of that land. Now look at that distance going around. You can see somebody uh, snowshoeing or cross country skiing all the way across there, way back in there, some kids on their sleds. Really see some distance here. Uh, now I'm gonna get a small fan. I like to highlight with a small fan. I'm gonna get a little bit of my thin medium here, the white medium, a little bit of white, and a little bit of my phthalo blue. It's like my phthalo blue mixed in my yellow. That's gonna turn green here. We'll have to be careful with that. Get a little bit more. You see this brush, I'm mixing up a, a, a bluish color. A bluish color, it's gonna be my highlight. It's gonna be like some uh, blue spruce trees. So if I come over here once again, just start touching in, give a little highlight. You can see how that tree just comes to life. Just a little bit of highlight. That color really brings that tree together. As you come down the bottom, the less pressure it gets darker down at the bottom. You can really see that tree come to life. Get a little bit more of that color. It's hard to get all the way at the top at times. There we get a little bit of highlight there. Now this tree, you might see a little bit of highlight on that one but I'm not gonna have you highlight on those couple in the back because they're way back there. You see it really turns that into a nice blue spruce kind of tree. Really gets some shape to that tree. Just a little bit of that color. Put that brush up. Now this is kind of a, kind of a night sky. I'm gonna take that brush that your mama gave you. That, that's the best brush there is to make it a moon. I touch it into a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna put a moon right, right there. Of all the brushes I got in Arsenal, I found that this brush seems to work the best, the brush your mama gave you. But if you rub too much, that moon will disappear in the night. So you just kind of put that moon on there. But you never want to stick that brush into the cleaner. You got to remember that. Don't stick that brush into the cleaner. Just wipe that off. It's amazing that baby wipes will take the oil paint right off your hands. Now I got a little, um, little liner brush. That, that, uh, that moon looks like it needs just a little bit of work to get it nice and round. With just a little bit of white paint on that brush. I'm just going to clean up that side a little bit. Like that, keep our, keep our planets nice and around the way they're meant to be. There, I can live with that. Now we're going to make a snow in this painting. <clears throat> and then we're going to put a little snowman down here too. Let's go ahead and make it, let's put the snowman in and then we'll make it snow. All right, for this snowman down here, we're going to take a little bit of this, uh, we're going to take a filbert brush, a filbert brush. Go back into that medium color we had. 
on the filbert brush and think about a snowman we got you got three kind of round objects to create a snowman got the bottom part of that snowman the middle part of that snowman and the top part of that snowman that might but this just giving us the base color of that snowman. We're going to come back with some highlights and shadows and really get some shape to him. We just want to get the three basic shapes. Three basic shapes. So I'm going to take a long, I know i got one of them around here. Okay, as I say, I'm going for a, a round brush for the snowman. I'm going to come into some of that dark color we had. To create a round shape in anything, you need three values of color. So there's our mid-tone. So if I come back with a little bit of the dark shadow, you kind of tap in on this side. That moon's over here, so we have a little shadow on this side of that snowman. And kind of tapping in gives a little texture for that guy. So if we kind of tap in, in each one of these round shapes, there'd be some shadow underneath there and some shadow underneath there and a little bit of shadow on the top of that snowman. And then we're going to wipe, we're going to clean this brush up in our odorless thinner. I'm just going to tap and break up that hard edge. Break up that hard edge, kind of create that more into the feel of a shadow. Start giving some roundness to the shape of that snowman. Just tapping that in, kind of turn that into a shadow. Tap that into there. Then we'll clean that brush up another time. We're going to come in with just some clean white, some clean titanium white. I'll load that brush up, some clean, clean titanium white. If we've got our moon on this side, we might see some some highlight. Once again, I'm just tapping. That tapping will really help give some texture to that snowman. Now think of this side where he's lit up by that, by that moon. Get some more of the clean white. Get some more of the clean white. Kind of tap in. Get some nice texture. Some nice texture to that snowman. Once again, I'm just going to wipe this brush clean now. You see that texture on there. That's what really makes that snowman look round and make him look believable. We got some more work to really make this snowman come alive. You can see him really starting to take shape. Really starting to take shape. Well, I have some of that dark color, that moon coming this so way. We'd have probably a little bit of shadow behind the snowman. So I'm going to set that snowman on the ground, have some of that shadow come this way. We'll work that shadow out a little bit. I just wanted to get that in there while I was thinking of it. Okay, this snowman. Clean that liner brush up. The snowman's turned just a little bit to give him a little character. We're going to create some arms on him. So we'll put some buttons on there. We might give him a little top hat. It seems to be top hat season here today, so uh, we'll give that guy a little top hat. So the first thing I'll do is come into a little bit of my black with my liner brush. And I'm going to create some nice little arms coming up here. Some nice limbs. You want them nice and realistic looking. You don't want them just to be little straight lines, give a little wiggle to it to make it look realistic. So if this snowman is turned a little bit, this arm would, wouldn't be as long. Wouldn't be on the, long on that side. But you get the effect of that snowman, two arms kind of leaned a little bit. We'll come back into that black. We'll give him some buttons here on the middle part of that body. Give him some buttons. Again, once again, we'll think about that shape, kind of turn that in, kind of give him some shape to that, to that snowman. And we've got a couple eyes made out of coal, a smile, we've got to get a carrot nose for him and a top hat. Let's go a little bit more here, get a little bit more of that black. See if we give him a couple eyes here. And a couple little things to give him the illusion of a mouth. And now to create, well before we create that carrot nose, he's got like a scarf on here. We've got some red out here, it's kind of mixing with some blue. But we'll get a little bit of red here, a little bit of thinner just to make it flow a little better. Get a little bit of that red, load that brush up, you can see that. Kind of give him a scarf here, have that scarf right here to keep his neck warm. Wind blowing a little bit, have that scarf kind of rolling out there. That looks good, I can live with that. Now we got a little bit of red on my brush. Take a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow that's almost turned green because of that blue there. But we got enough there we can save it. Get a little bit of an orangey kind of color. You won't see a lot of detail in this carrot, in this nose, but I'm going to give him a little bit of a the feel of a carrot nose there. I hope you can see that on the screen. Now my favorite part of that snowman is this top hat, because you can't paint a snow or you can't have a snowman without a top hat. 
So we got a little flat brush for that. That one will work. Got a little flat brush here. We're gonna come into black, just straight black. Load that brush up, straight black. Now you gotta be careful because you wanna keep this a top hat. Sometimes it could look like a derby. You just don't want it to look like a big sombrero. I don't think they have too many snowmen down south of the border. So we're gonna keep this in the shape of a top hat. So if I just put it on there, it's kind of sitting down on his head a little bit. Put him on there. Right now it could look like a little bellhop. So we need to put the brim on that hat. So we get that hat on there at first. Wipe that brush clean. Go back with my liner brush. I know I've got a liner brush around here somewhere, right there. So back into my black. Roll it into that black, get some black on there. Put a little brim on this hat so it doesn't look like a bellhop anymore. Put a little brim on this side. A little brim on that side, kind of gives the feel of a top hat. The feel of a top hat. Now with that flat brush again, since that moon is glowing on that one side, take just a little bit of white, put just a little bit of highlight on that side of that hat. Just a little touch and get out of there, just a little bit of highlight. So now we can make it snow on there. Let's put a little bit of shadow. Let's put a little bit of shadow under this tree. The shadow, I get the wrong color. Let's go back to that dark color. Get a little bit of shadow under this tree. Come this way, there might be a little shadow under that one. And then just real loosely kind of work it out. Set that shadow into the ground. Set that shadow into the ground. Work it out so you don't have any harsh lines. Work that shadow out so you don't have any harsh lines. Now we can make it snow in this painting. So if I take a clean fan brush, which we got one back here, a clean fan brush, get a little bit of my paint thinner, a little bit of my white medium, and a little bit of white paint. I want to come up with kind of a uh, milky kind of consistency. Get a little more white paint. So I got some white medium, some titanium white, and a little bit of thinner. Maybe just a touch more of the thinner. Get a little bit more of the white. They're getting kind of a milky kind of consistency. Now if I take that brush and just pull back on my bristles a little bit, I can make it snow on this painting. Make it snow. I hope the camera can show that we're making it snow. They're just lightly kind of, loosely kind of taking snow around. Put some snow over top of our snowman. He's out in the snow. Get some snow down over here. Let it snow. It's winter time here in Indiana. I'm tired of the snow, but we're gonna make a little snow in this painting here. So now, you always gotta keep your hands clean when you're painting. So I keep my hands clean. I'm gonna take me another liner brush. My favorite part of this painting, my favorite part of any painting, sign my name. So I get some black over here. And I'll put my JDW right on there. Just like so. And there, there must have been some magic in that old silk hat he wore. But you know, I like to see these paintings in a frame. So we're gonna take this guy out of here loosely, let that fall down. We'll come over here to our frame. Okay, like I say, I love to see a new painting go into a frame. You can really show it off. So you get these speed clips. This painting sits down on a little lip inside there so you can put a wet painting right into a frame with no problem. Set that right up in the easel so you can see what it looks like. There you go. There must have been some magic. Really like the way that looks. So if you ever want to try this painting, please send me a copy at jdwayne at the rock and roll painter .com. I'd love to see what you do. Thanks for joining in. Hope you enjoyed it.